Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP-1. The Dark Ring Space Program is picking up speed, embarking on missions that are both more intricate and daring. Take for instance our current endeavor, a dual launch mission to the moon. The first launch which you are witnessing now is a lunar orbiter with dual purposes. Its primary mission is to collect scientific data, a routine task. However, its secondary mission is far more captivating, serving as a communication relay between Earth and lander destined for the Moon's far side. The Triglav rocket, boasting a 5-ton payload capacity to orbit, is the ideal launch vehicle for this task. The planned maneuver is executed flawlessly by the upper stage. Following separation, the orbiter deploys its antenna and solar panels, gearing up for a coast phase of just over three days, culminating in a polar, slightly eccentric orbit. After successfully completing the insertion burn, the orbiter commences scientific data collection and stands ready to facilitate communication with the upcoming lander. Lander, which sits in the payload bay of the Perun rocket, crowned by the potent Hydrolux powered Thunderbolt third stage. It propels the payload directly into a translunar trajectory, aligning with the relay for a polar approach. Post-burn, the lander separates and proceeds solo. Upon lunar arrival, it settles into a parking orbit, awaiting the relay's optimal orientation. After several orbits, the lander ignites its engines for the descent, targeting a landing near the lunar north pole. The AJ-10 engine ignites for the final time, cancelling the lander's velocity. Now, minor thrusters suffice for a precise, controlled landing. A landing that almost ended up with mission failure, as the lander nearly fell on its side. But Thanks to the top-mounted thrusters, stability was regained. This marked the historic first landing on the moon's far side. Now, we set our sights on the first interplanetary mission to Venus. Perun lifts off from the launch pad on top of colorful plumes that were the effect of some amusing engineers adding some food colorant to the rocket fuel.
achieved low Earth orbit, the Thunderbolt performs the first interplanetary maneuver. The RL-10 engine roars, accelerating the stage by nearly 4 km per second. The orbiter then detaches, activates its scientific instruments and deploys its solar panels, readying for a 6-month voyage. A minor correction maneuver, ensuring correct trajectory, is the final step before standby mode. Fast forwarding 6 months, we observe the orbiter's gradual approach to Venus. A correction burn to their sprayer secures a polar orbit, allowing to map whole Venus's surface. Final 9 minute burn of 2500 meters per second of delta V places the probe in a highly eccentric scientific orbit. The primary scientific phase commences as the probe aligns with the Sun, jettisons the insertion stage and starts collecting valuable data. Returning to Earth, we witness the Mokos rocket deploying a modest satellite into LEO. While unremarkable, this satellite is destined for greatness as a target for the first orbital rendezvous attempt. With its solar panels extended, it powers basic scientific instruments and communication systems and awaits a visitor. The mission's climax is the launch of a crewed capsule atop the Trigla. The launch is precisely timed to match the inclination and longitude of the ascending node with the target's orbit. when in orbit, a tedious task of plotting a correct maneuver began. It was first time ever for me to plan a rendezvous with Principia, so it took quite some time to understand what actually should I do. But finally, I've made it. Kosho's approach brings the capsule within meters to the target probe.
After waiting for sunlight, some more maneuvers were performed, and the probe was approached from different angles to test maneuverability of the capsule. It is an important test before future docking attempt. The mission concludes with a orbit burn and the jettisoning of the service module, despite minor complications. Electing re-entry, air brake minimizes g-forces on the crew, peaking at just over 3.5 g. The crew has safely splashed down in the ocean. That would be all for today. Thank you everyone for watching, please press like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and see you again in my next video.